Hello and welcome to Vitush Academy for our pre less tutorial for ASP.NET MVC with Entity Framework Core. In this tutorial, we would map inheritance to a database, create the person class, update constructor and student, add a person to the model, create and update migrations, and test the implementation. So, watch us, pretty much. Let's see what do we have made so far. This is our application here. And we have the home, about, students, courses, instructors, and departments. We can go to instructors and click on select. Then we see courses taught by the selected instructor. Then furthermore, click a specific uh, course and we can see the students enrolled for the selected course. This is really a nice name, Berlin Sophia, but it's a name. Furthermore, we can go to students and we can go to details and take a look, for example, the grade and stuff. We can also edit the grade because Mina Batman is really good or not edit the grade because it's not from here. So let's speak a bit, a bit about the inheritance. If we take a look in our Visual Studio code here, what we can see is that some of our models actually share equal uh, not methods but properties and the models that share equal properties are instructor and student let's open them like close to each other like this and take a look for example we have last name for the instructor and we also have last name for the student which is pretty much the same we also have first mid name here and first mid name here which is also pretty much the same and we also have our first name somewhere uh, no we have full name I guess yeah exactly so these three parts full name uh, first middle name and last name are the same for both these classes so what we can do is uh, we can simply decide that we create a class called person which actually has these three properties and each of these classes inherits from the person class so let's create this person class from which a student and student and instructor would be inheriting we would simply click on models add new item and we are going to call it person and wait a bit and in it we can simply start for example taking the ID it's really useful whenever we have like the student from here great taking the ID then take the last name exactly as it is I am not cutting I would remove them later um, furthermore get the the next one that we should get is the first mid name this one mm. also I forgot to copy the last name okay and the third one would be the full name here okay so far so good of course Visual Studio is really unhappy with a lot of stuff let's see pressing control and dot what would be the fix the quick fix is using system components model data annotation great why not another one here the schema great another con control and dot would bring us to a really neat class so far so good actually yeah and in the student we only actually should start deleting stuff so we would definitely delete the ID because we have it in person we would delete the last name because we have it in person we would delete first mid name because we have it in person and the enrollment date would stay this one we would delete as well and actually we have only two properties enrollment date and the collection of enrollments but we should say student 
inherits person like this that's great so far so good let's take a look at the instructor the instructor same story take the ID and delete it and this ID here actually would pretty much make a lot of problems with us because in this case it is a big one in this case it is a small one and as you remember before because of this mistake that I partly deliberately made a lot of problems were appearing in the tutorials before so this is something interesting we are going to, be to make probably one exception or not let me think actually it's better not to do exceptions promptly we are going to expect that it wouldn't work but I mean as far as we would be always looking for the big ID now is the time to fix it so the ID is going to be deleted of course and everything else which is duplicated would be deleted as well so last name duplicated I mean from the person uh, first mid name deleted higher date would stay definitely uh, full name would be deleted course assignment would stay office assignment would stay and here we would say uh, inherit from person of course uh, third thing to do is to add a person to the model so knowing what's going on pretty much let's close okay a bit for everything and we can go to our school context which was uh, not here not here migrations not in migrations models uh, school view model no not here it was views nope it was in the school context DB context whenever we don't know anything and it's obviously here but if we didn't know where it was what we can do is we can simply say school context and write it right here in the solution explorer and it would show us exactly where it is so click like this and then go home back great now we're in the school context and let's add our um, person so it would be here public db set person and it will be called people and of course get set and we would add a table for it model builder entity person dot to table and as far as we are writing everything in Spanish in order to show the difference the table is called persona or personas for plural okay so now is the time for the creating the migration so what do we do in order to create the migration we should go to view other windows command and in our command window we simply write add migration and here we name it adding person for inheritance it's a nice name mm -hmm. and we see command add is not valid and the reason for this is that we shouldn't do it in the command window but in a package manager console so let's click on paste no it wasn't this one definitely not so simply add migration and name of the migration would be adding person for inheritance enter and let's check let's wait a bit build failed Mm -hmm. 
that's a good one. Let's try again. Probably we do not have anything in the migrations. Yeah, I know what was what, the problem. The problem is here that I have actually uh, completely mm, pretty much uh, changed the database, dropped the database completely. But these migrations they stayed the migrations folder. So let us yeah let's delete the migrations this is okay not a best practice but whenever you simply drop the database whenever you do it it would work build failed again hmm. well let's be a bit more brutal drop database Build failing every time. Let's that's not a good one. <laughs> okay. Is it probably because we are still running our application? Yeah, actually. Let's close the application completely also from the IIS exit yes and now add migration uh -oh, no way that's strange let's go to build and build solution see what's happening okay this is it the ID for example here is telling us, hey dude, you are doing something strange. Yeah, I dot id. Yeah, this was a good one, a great idea to come up with the building. So dot id. Dot id. Dot id. So this is what happens once you are just for once inconsistent, but and you try to do something, then you have to think about what wrong did I do and you actually lost the whole migration folder because of it but the problem for the migration yeah, is obviously that it does not compile and it does not compile because of our inconsistency or in this case my inconsistency yeah mm. And the bad thing is that it's not only here, these are the ones that are caught, but there were some other places, I guess, in which the ID was given as a string, in a string form, and in this one it would it would be it would compile, it would be built, but the problem is that uh, and the problem is that once it compiles and it is built, it's going to return a server error. Okay something exists and it is unused sorry object in sh can be simplified definitely can be simplified simplified yeah unused but it would stay okay so build solution package manager okay and now add migration mm -hmm. instructor does not contain yeah this is the one i was thinking about ID, okay, but it would be okay. Like model ID, although it is, as you see, string. It is quite uh, okay. What is it? I don't see it here. I oh, know it is here. Visual Studio actually works quite well, saying us where the problems are. Okay, so ID. ID, ID, ID. I cannot choose replace because I'm afraid that it would probably risk something else. Okay, so 
let's give it a try again. Add migration, adding person for inheritance. Wow, it seems like it is working. Okay. So, this is the new generated folder. Let's take a look at the up. Okay. This is how it looks like. And in the tutorial, it says that we should actually uh, change a bit of stuff because if we simply say database update, then it would uh, delete a lot of our existing uh, our existing columns. Pretty much, it would drop the instructor table and rename the student table to person. So they give an idea like to rewrite the whole up method in a way so let's start here rewriting the up method so migration builder dot drop foreign key this obviously drops a foreign key and which foreign key it is this one name fk enrollment student student ID ID small one comma table enrollment mm, okay then migration drop index migration builder drop drop index dropping the name ix enrollment student id in the table enrollment okay so i the next one is migration builder rename table then add column add column outer column and add column okay this one so i would probably copy and paste them simply from the tutorial so we don't lose time and make sure that it's correct so instructor new line person grade or uh, rename to table okay should it be instructor yeah new name person okay now a question Sh what do we mean under new name is it the person table or the one that i'm using in my fancy way which was i think in the school context it was this one to table personas that's something that we can see i mean if it blows it would be the wrong one so yeah uh, furthermore copy existing student data into new person table this is a bit challenging let's let's take a look how to do it actually so it is migration builder sql and we simply give the sql here insert into dbo.person last name first name hire date enrollment date and which one is the next one yeah discriminator and old id so in this one select last name first name new as higher date that's a good one enrollment date student as discriminator id as old item for student okay copying this as well not to make IR and like this okay so this was the big insert and fix a bit stuff migration builder dot sql mm. update dbo enrollment set student id equals 
select id from dbo.person where old id equals enrollment dot student id and discriminator equals student in like this so far so good next removing the temporary key would be migration builder dot uh, drop table mm, name student hopefully it would be student and not a student as it is the one that we speak about then creating the index would be done with a migration builder create index dot create index i mean dot create index Mm -hmm. and the index would be name like this IEX enrollment student student ID then table enrollment and uh, column student ID And then migration builder add foreign key name foreign key underscore enrollment underscore person student ID mm -hmm. table would be enrollment column would be student ID uh, principal table would be person and principal column would be ID of course with small one because we learn from our mistakes then on delete referential action cascade cascade means that if this one is deleted then everything else which has to do with it is going to be deleted okay this was the official one that we had before not a bad one actually I'll simply leave it like this. So if this one doesn't work, I would simply uncomment this code. So and a bit brute force everything. Yeah. This is this would be a bad practice, but okay. What is expected? Okay, it's only one. Everything okay? Everyone happy? Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, let's write our beloved thing update database and see what happens. I am expecting actually a lot of bad stuff to happen. Mm. Cannot find object enrollment because it does not exist or you do not have permissions. Yeah, true. I mean, enrollment is obviously with its Spanish name. So, let's give it a quick try. And see where the Spanish names were. The Spanish names were here. So, I would simply parallelize it like this. And, okay, where was it? Up. Close this, make this smaller. So enrollment 
would be inscriptiones person would be personas pers in roman date uh, personas 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 Default value would be instructor. Instructor would be. Oh, instructor is okay, I guess, for the default value. Okay, to table personas. Table personas. And here. DBO personas. DBO estudiantes yeah this is what happens whenever you try to introduce something fancy in the tutorial at the end inscriptiones you come and you rewrite everything this is just because I wrote this part but something that we can always new personas inscriptiones and here I'm once again kind of afraid to use mass uh, replacement because something bad can happen. Uh, studiantes. No, nah, student is a good one. I mean, this is like a, just a value. Okay. Uh, studiantes. Drop table with studiantes. Okay, this one is inscriptiones. Student ID, inscriptiones, student ID, uh, personas. Yeah, let's give it a try. Update database. Hmm. Cannot find object enrollment because of something. Okay, let's see whether the enrollment is. Yeah. So it is like this, like this. Oh, no. It was only in this one, I guess. All the others were okay. Okay, now I'm going a bit back with that one, okay. And simply change it here. Try once again to update the database and see what happens. Mm -hmm. It's not a constraint. Definitely it is not a constraint because okay, in this case it should be probably a bit different. It should be, yeah. Like this and then student would be estudiantes. Then a studiantes ID. Let's see. <laughs> it is not a constraint. Okay. So obviously this is not the best idea. Let's be a bit brutal in our solution. As I said, simply do it like this and get the KU update database we are going to lose some information But yeah, create table assignations de oficina, column table new. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's remove this one then. Comment it out. KU, uh, KC is the commenting one. And let's see, departamentos also exists for sure. KC Cursus exists KC mm. 
descripciones exist. Ok, KC. Create index. It's a good question whether all these indices exist. Student ID, course ID, definitely. Instructor ID, department ID, instructor ID. Everything is there. Update database. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this one exists. Department ID exists. Instructor ID exists. Inscriptiones cursus ID exists. Yeah. KC as well. And updating database. The good thing is that we do not care a lot about our database in this case because it is the testing database. And it says done. Wow. Okay. Let's remove everything that was commented out. So, this is what we got the personas thing. Pretty nice, pretty neat. Mm. So, it's a good question. Uh, with some primary key. Interesting weather. Let's check a bit. Not here, but in our SQL server. So, opening SQL Server Management Studio, Contoso University Tables, refresh, mm. and it's a great idea to see a new diagram, so new database diagram. Let's save it, but before saving, add table and simply add everything. Take some time, but it is rather nice. So, cursus inscriptionas estudiantes. Instructores here. Estudiantes, and somehow I do not see personas is at all. Like, why personas are not here? Mm, at table. No, personas are not here at all. Or I'm like missing them somehow. Let's see what we have in the personas. Shouldn't be having anything. No, absolutely nothing. Yeah. That's rather interesting. Uh, let's uh, think something else. Let's try the following drop database and see what would happen. <laughs> drop database is rather brutal, but somehow you have to be brutal somehow. Mm -hmm. Yes, to all with A. Great. So now simply create our new database because it would be created due to the fact that uh, we have ensure created in our startup somewhere. Mm. Right, not in the startup, in the program. If we go here, here. Initialize in context, we can go to pick definition, and this is what I speak context database ensure created. Great, so our thing loaded, and this is what we have student courses instructors exactly the way we expected. Let's go to the SQL server database diagrams, new database diagram. Okay. Right, there is something waiting already. This one. Mm. Add table. This one, personas. And see what's going on already. Wow. This table is rather popular because 
takes information from Estudiantes and from the Instructores. Yep. Instructor ID, anything, higher date. Mm, this is not the best way how it looked like, but anyway, let's simply close this one. No, don't save it. And create a new database diagram. Hopefully, this time it would be better. Mm, this is what I got. Add everything. Close. Yeah, personas. We have last name, first name, discriminator. Higher date and enrollment date. Okay. We have the instructors. And we have estudiantes here. It's rather interesting, but but do we have we see some interesting stuff, yeah. Okay, so simply let's take a look at the Contos University tables. What we can see is that we have personas and we don't have the others at all. View dependencies. Yeah, it's not what I told it is. Uh, we can take a look and see, for example, select top 1000 row. And we would see the following that the students are into our mm, table, and also the teachers are, or the instructors are into our table. So the students don't have higher date. And the teachers don't have enrollment date and there is another table another column here which is shown discriminator which actually we don't remember like writing anywhere like you see like student person there is no discriminator so this is something built in obviously by the entity framework which somehow helps us to work with it telling us which class this is whether it's the student or not the student, but the instructor. Uh, let's take a look at the diagram whenever we create a new one. We can click Add. And then Close. Okay, what? Why is this here? Uh, okay. Estudiantes, it's a table that doesn't exist, but present in the diagram. Okay, this. And his took Torres is here. So pretty interesting, like yeah. See personas having everything. And estudiantes, if we take a look here and if we say okay, I want to Yeah, that's rather strange because this table actually does not exist here. But it exists in the diagram. I mean it's rather strange. I would call it a bug. I mean, having a table that doesn't exist in the diagram being visible, but okay, table instructors no longer exist in the database. Okay, personas then close, but the estudiantes is here. Okay, slowly our SQL server starts to realize what have we done. Which is rather strange. Okay, let's refresh it once more. See tables, database diagrams, new database diagram, add table, uh, no, add uh, table. Okay, table with studiantas no longer exists in database, that's great. Inscriptores. Instructores personas. I'm expecting the same message for instructores. Let's see whether we would get it. Yes. And then personas. Close. Great. That's that's the picture I was expecting actually. In a way. Uh, we only have personas. So whenever we were having either students or professors, now we have only one. 
uh, only one um, table and everything is either a bit more complex or a bit not so complex because okay we are reducing the number of tables this way and this is our new way of seeing stuff so last thing to go and to do is simply check once again what we have done we have mm, created an additional class which is called person and we stripped off student and instructor everything which was the same as in person pretty much the id the last name and the first middle name and the full name and now it works so thank you for watching and enjoy your day if you have any questions write in the comments below and have fun